Hey, and welcome to the Unshaken Painting class where we are going to paint a vase of tulips. Okay, you are going to need a blank canvas uh, and some paints, and I'll put the paints uh, right on the screen here. Uh, you'll also need um, a piece of chalk and uh, some paint brushes. And if you have um, a knife, uh, a palette knife, um, any size will work. So uh, grab one of these. You also need water and like a napkin. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is get a bunch of black and a flat brush, big, a big flat brush. You can just like squirt it right on there, uh, right on your canvas. But basically you wanna just cover the whole thing. So. Let's just cover the whole, um, you'll even want to get the sides and you don't have to go any sort of direction. You could just go any sort of direction you want to because almost all of this is going to be covered up. So you might think like, this is not, see how I have a background? This actually is going to go, let me show you, um, be between, you're end up you're gonna just leave a little bit of black outline around the edges so that's what the black is for if you want to just buy a black canvas you can do that too um, but basically so just get a ton of black slap it on there get it on the sides and I'm gonna actually do a different color than what is seen right here um, just because that blue is like really blue and I want to experiment with um, some different colored tulips. So I'm going to do a different background uh, and we'll talk about that when we get there. But go ahead and let's just get that black on there. You know, we can think about this in terms of like when, um, when God created the world, it was good. Here, light, white, perfectly white, right? And then when Adam and Eve sinned because they chose independence from God. They chose their own way, thinking that they knew um, sin entered the picture. And here, um, here is what we get, right? We just get a world that is tainted by sin. Just keep getting it all covered. And we're gonna need to have some time to let this dry. So, might be a good time after this uh, to go grab some coffee or tea or put some music on or something like that. All right, and you don't want a bunch of clumps. So if there's like clumps, just make sure you go over it to you don't see and you don't want any like you know, white parts either so all right I'm gonna lift it up like this so, so we can so I can get underneath here no and here we have black now I have it on my fingers and I have it on here but that's what sin is right sin is messy and it gets everywhere all right but our next season is coming um, where Jesus brings beauty out of sin, right? Okay, so go ahead, take a break. Um, let this dry for a little bit. If you want it to go faster, you can get a um, hair dryer and like dry it. It'll make it go faster. Okay, let's see. Welcome back. Hopefully your canvas is dry. All right, so now we're gonna um, portion it out. Okay, so say halfway down um, and then halfway down again. All right, so that is where our table is gonna be and it's gonna be kind of sideways. So say if you look at this one, um, oop, let me back up a ways here. Um, ooh, this is a pretty big one. Okay, uh, we have, so right about in the middle is where the top of the base is, about, right? So then, about halfway down is where the table is, especially over on this side, but it goes at an angle. So we're gonna take our 
um, chalk, piece of chalk. And you can go either way with your table if you want to angle it either way. All right, so say this is about the middle um, and then about a middle again. So I'll just say like about this. And this is chalk. So it's like if you don't like that, you wipe it off. If you don't like it and you can redo it. Um, and it's going to get painted over anyway. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, that is a great thing about painting is you can like redo any of it any of it okay so if you make a mistake and you don't like it you just have to wait until it's dry and then you can like paint on top of it all right so it's nothing is set in stone this isn't an engraving that you can't like put the pieces back you really can change it so you can like take the pressure off that it's it's going to be okay and if you don't like something because chances are there's something's going to happen that you don't like but that's okay you can just see the little part you don't like and just make changes to that one little part. Don't throw out the whole thing because you look at it and say, oh, I don't like that. You'll just look at and find out why don't I like it? What is it about it that I don't like? Find the little part that you don't like and then that little part you can change. But well, I'll, I'll walk you through it. So that's pretty, um, that's pretty steep. I think it might be a little too steep for me. So I'm going to go, I'm gonna take it down a notch. Maybe I'll do like that. There we go. Yep, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna just wipe mine off with a little bit of, this is already wet, um, cause I washed my my um, palette with it. Um, so I'll just go like this and something like that. Is that about right? Let's see, I draw another one. Okay, so there's my table. Um, and we're then we're gonna put a base in it and I'm gonna just mark out my vase real quick too. So that's about in the middle, maybe a little bit underneath. And then say if I'm looking at it, um, it's about thirds, all right? So if I wanna just do, there's about the middle. Here, would that be the third, third, third. Okay, so here's my vase. It's gonna be about this big. And then you just make a curved line okay can you see that okay a curved line um and then from that we're gonna leave a little blip you know a little area for the the blip of the you know the edge of the vase but then um let's see i'm gonna come back and just eyeball how far down well it's not all the way down to the middle of the table but it's maybe like a third here it's another third down the table so if I were to do about that much, maybe less. Okay, so it's gonna come down about there. And then you can see the vase goes in, not a ton, even though it's your vase. So if you want it to go way in and way out, you can do that. Um, but you go in and then out. The out doesn't extend further than the top. It goes about the same. So we'll say, we want it to end the lowest part or the fattest part looks about here and here and we're gonna have it so let's see here I'll just go like so in and remember this is chalk so if you don't like it just get something on there and adjust chances are it's not gonna look quite like you like but that's okay and you can change it. So once we have something on there, okay, I got something. Now, I think my curve is going a little too low. I'm gonna make it a little bit fatter, go quicker, fatter, okay? That's what I'm gonna do. You don't have to do that. Um, okay, and right here, doesn't look like I have much of a bottom. So I'm gonna try to, Flatten it. Course, look, I just got it. Do I want to do that? Maybe I can go a little bit lower. Oh, maybe this, I might like this. Let's see. Let me erase the little parts that. Whoop. Okay. Huh? Maybe. I might like that. You know, up here looks a little bit funny to me, but 
maybe that's just, okay, so now I might change that, but I'm gonna leave it for now. Um, it's kind of looking too skinny to me, but let me put the handle and then I'll make it bigger if I need to. Okay, so the handle here comes, look, it's like a little tiny bit above the table. Um, so it goes, let's see, where's the top of it? It goes, oh, I guess you don't need to see that. Okay, so it goes about the same and it goes out, not as big, maybe half as big as this. So it'll go out that far. So I'll put a little dot there. Okay, so it's gonna go, and it's gonna go this high. So I'll go around and then it connects to a little above here. So I'll put a little dot there. Okay, so, and it just goes in a curved line. All right, and then of course, you gotta make that. Hmm. Okay, it's looking too big. That looks like that handle's like way off, way off the edge. This might be my outside. I might like that as my outside one. Let's see. So let me do another inside one. Oh, wait. Okay. See, maybe I should have just erased the whole thing, but I can see. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, that's the one I did. Oh, look. Okay, let me just start that again. Okay, not a problem, right? Because we can do that. Okay, I'm just not going to go as far, but I do want to go to here. Okay, okay. Yeah, yep, yep, I'm liking that. Even though this one seems to go way down, I don't know. For a smaller vase, I think I'm, I think I want it to go not quite as far down. All right, and then this of course looks too pointy, so I'm, okay, I'm gonna round that off. Uh, let's see, do I want it a little bigger? I think I do want it a little bigger, okay. All right, I'm gonna make it a little bigger. Um, what do you think, like of yours? Are you, you want it bigger, smaller, how you doing? And then you could just, Erase that guy, erase that guy. Okay, let's see, that works. All right, I'm happy with that. Okay, so we got our table, we got our vase, and then the tulips are just so easy. You'll just like plop the paint on there um, and we'll do some flowers and stuff. Anyway, so this is where we're at now. Let's start with the table. Okay, so with the table, you'll wanna get some browns. Okay, the thing is with painting is it's, don't just use one color. Table is not brown, right? There's tons of shades of brown. There's like light brown and dark brown and whites and even blacks in there. There's lots and lots of browns. So grab some browns that you got and go ahead and put a bunch uh, on, say if you have a paper plate or um, a palette or a paper, piece of paper even works, um, but get a bunch of paint, um, browns and if you want a lighter one, then you'll want a light brown, maybe even a white to pull in there. Or if you want a darker table, then you can pull uh, pull in like a darker brown uh, too. All right, so go ahead and get your browns ready. I have right here, let's see, I have a, a light mocha and I have a burnt umber. All right, so these are the two I'm gonna go with. I'll add white and um, black in there if need be, but you just mix them. You don't want to just mix it into one solid color because then it looks like you just have one solid color and that's not what we're going for. So if you want a little bit darker, pull in um, more. Oop, I got some. Okay. And you're just going to want to go leave some space. Like don't touch your, um, don't touch your vase. But so just lay it on there. We're gonna use the palette knife. So this is just the basic coating. Uh, go around that. Look, I almost got a little bit too close there. Um, and you can, if you do get too close and you want a little more black, you can um, you can put put in the black later. So that'll be okay. All right. 
is very brown, I think. Wonder, I want darker. Let's see. Okay, let's get some darks in here. Okay. All righty, and then get the side and the bottom because you want your table to extend around. Okay, I'm gonna want some darkers. So I'm gonna add, and I ran out of my dark, so I'm gonna add some of my burnt umber. Okay, and then pull out your palette knife, mix them a little, but not totally, don't mix them totally. Um, and I want it a little darker. And then you're just gonna start from here and drag. Oof, this is gonna be hard to do on this easel. Because you need to get really flat. There we go. Ooh, I love that! Then you get the table lookingness, right? All right. Oh, yes, good. That's awesome. Okay. Start over here. And you wanna go sideways because that's the green of the, right? Green of the table. Whoop. Okay. Sweet. All right. There you go. How easy is a table, right? Pretty awesome. Okay. Oh, look at some of my black is shit. I wonder, I might like that. Just not over here. There's like a little bit of black right there. Eh, I'll just go like this. Oh my. Oh goodness. I keep doing it because I can't get it flat. There we go. Okay. There's our table. What do you think? You like yours? Okay. Now let's wash your wash your brush, wash your palette, or your um whatever you got there. And next we are gonna need some um white creams. Actually, don't wash your palette. Like save that um, brown. You might pull that into the base. So just bring in a white is all you're gonna need now. Okay. So wash my brush. Now I just added a little bit of that um, light brown color. The little what was that called? Little mo or light mocha, but you know you could use any sort of light brown. Um, and I just mixed it with my white. Um, I don't want to pull too much dark in there because I do want it to be different than the, the table. But just get it on there because this is not going to be the. We're going to use a palette on, or I mean a, a knife on this too. Um, so we'll just, uh, Ooh, I think I'm running out of my light mocha though. So there you go. And try to keep that black line down there. So don't go all the way to the table. Um, I'm using a flat brush. But once I get to this, my flat brush, I think is going to be too, it's, it's going to be too big. So I'm going to have to switch to a round brush. All right. Now see when this is dry, I can, um, uh, erase that, the chalk right there, or I can even add in brown if that's too thick of a line. I'm not, not sure how I feel about that quite yet, but I don't have to be because I can look at it later. And make changes. Okay, so here we go. Let me get a different brush. I'll use, let's see, this I think won't be too big. This is a 16, but maybe like a 14 or 10 might be better. All right, let's get some on there. Let's see. Or really whatever you have as far as a round brush. All right. Okay. Okay, and then you want this to be smooth. Whoops. Oh well. Let's see. Okay, how's that looking? Maybe this could be a little neater right here. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna need some more of my mocha 
And then we're gonna just do a palette knife on here too. So grab um, your palette knife. And if you need more, let's see here. Mix it together. That is not the same color. Let me add some more white. All right, and same thing with this is you don't wanna completely mix it because you want some of the, ooh, still too dark. All right, let me add some more white. All right, there you go. Okay, so now I want to just kind of palette knife it on there um, and keep it straight if you can. Um, you could go down. That's like how some pottery looks. Uh, and then around. Or if you go sideways, that could that works too, because some pottery has like the hands. Or if you just want the palette knife look, you can just slap it on there. So try different things, whichever way you like it, because it's um, you get to have it your way. All right, I'm showing the black because I'm doing it upright here. Hopefully, you guys, you could just put it real thick on there if need. Okay. Okay. And then with this guy, if you have a thin, no, I'm not even going to try that. It's not thin enough. Okay. So now that you have used your palette knife to give it some texture, I, we're going to go back to the paintbrush. Goodness. All right, I'm gonna have to hold this a minute and pull it down like this. Get some straight here. Okay, okay, that might work. Actually, I want it all the way across. Okay, um, what do you think? My colors got a little blended, so I think I'm gonna add some white, not where my, my browns are. So I'm gonna put it over on the side. I already have brown on my palette knife, so I'm gonna just add some white in there just to make sure to get, that I don't have just one brown looking color. I really like the white pottery looking Feel. So I'm going to add some, woo, you can see it. Okay. Here. Alrighty. There we go. I need to take it down again. Okay. Okay, one more time. Let me take it down. So that's the thing. Just keep going until you actually really, ooh. Okay, there. I am happy with that. Okay. Um, and then if yours dried here and it looks like a little bit light, like mine looks over here, um, you might need to just add another coat of paint. So just to make it real thick. So I'm gonna take a lot of my whites in to make sure I really get a bunch of it right there. Okay. All right, good. Okay, now let me show you something in here. If you can see in this one here, this vase, there is a dark shading with a palette knife here um, right under here and then it extends over on the side and then a little bit down here So we're just gonna add a little bit of a darker color. Don't you're not gonna put it up on the the rim here Just underneath and we'll just get a little bit and drag it down And then drag it all the way down and come out in here and then come a little bit on the inside of the, the handle here. All right, so 
Go ahead and grab a tiny bit of that darker color you have. Put my brushes over here. Oops. Okay, so, and pull in some of that darker color. Oops, I picked up some weird things. Okay, pull in a little bit, and then we'll extend down. Use your palette knife. Okay. Whoop. Ooh, I had so much there that. Okay. All right, palette knife, and then you can go in and make, um, use your brush if needed. So if it's just looking a little bit too chunky or something, you could go in here. Ooh, I got some darker on here. Let's move that out. Let's move this out. All right, I don't know, let's see. Got some thick paint there, but I think I might like that. All right, so go ahead and get, put some darker there. Go ahead and get it how you like it. Again, if it doesn't look how you want, just paint right over it. Um, if you really want, like if a big change, because sometimes if you just keep adding paint, it's not actually going to, um, it'll just smear it together. So if you want to make a big change, then wait till it's dry and then add on top of it. All right, there we go. So we got a base and try to make sure there's no like drippy, like it's not so thick that it's going to drip right off. But there we go. Great. All right, go ahead and wash your brush, wash your palette knife and... You won't need any more of these browns. You can go ahead and get rid of the browns and we'll add in uh, the background. Let's do the background. All right, we are gonna start on the tulips. Okay, welcome back. All right, so now we're gonna start on the leaves or the greenery. So you just need a couple different greens and maybe like a dark bluish color. So I just have true green. And I have a, let's see, what color is this? A Brilliant, it's called Brilliant, which is kind of like a light lime type of color. And this was an Admiral Blue. All right, so same thing, you don't wanna mix them totally together, but you wanna just kinda get so there's um, some streaks and such in there, okay? So for leaves, um, you just wanna think about the shape and Basically, it's like if you start out here and you just want to come back in like so, and we can go over that. We can, whoops, um, go back over that with some white. So you just want to go, let's see, um, probably up to here and we'll just do leaves every which direction. So say, whoop, there you go. Um, and since we're going to connect them all, I'm just going to go like this. Okay. And it's just like a, you start narrow and you get thicker. All right. And then we can do some really big ones. And with your brush, the more you push down, um, the thicker it gets. So this will be all covered up by um, flowers and such right there. Um, that's like a little bit more of a point. There we go. And then you can pull in after you have some uh, 
big ones like so. Let's see. Um, go up higher. Uh, um, you can pull in some of that blue and that'll create just a tiny bit, but that'll create a little bit more depth. You do that. So you can go over some of them. looks like it needs something there. All right, and then I'm gonna go a little higher. So I think in this one back here, there's like tulips sticking out above the greenery. I think I want a little bit of green sticking out up there. So I think I might just go like to put a couple of them that are a little bit higher up there. So not a ton but enough. Let's see. All right. That might be, this one's looking weird right here. So I think I'll just do that one again. It's like too thick. Okay. Too much paint on my brush. All right. Ooh. Okay. Um, and you know what we could do? Is maybe since it's like a little bit weird here, I could go. Well, fill that in, or I can go in front of the jar. Maybe I'll do that with the little one. Uh, there we go. Okay. And then maybe another little one over on this side. Okay. All right. Oop, you know what? It looks like it's missing a long one, like right out here. There we go. Oop. I did that. A little bit too much paint right there then. You know what? That might not be long enough. Let's see. Okay. All right. So you just put some of your little guys in there. Uh, looks good. Okay, so we are pretty much done with this, but you could set that aside. You might need some of the um, green in a little bit, but let this dry and then we'll come back and we'll add some um, tulips. Okay, so let's start on the tulips. Go ahead and get, I have a new palette. Uh, since then I want to save that green in case we're going to need it. Um, but go ahead and get the color of tulips that you want. So I'm going to do like a light pink and a coralish and see how that turns out. Uh, cameo pink, actually, and flamingo coral, and then a white to kind of um, pull in some, some white. So uh, since this is dry, I do have like a wet part right there. So I'm going to try not to put anything on top of that right now uh, because I don't want it to blend, you know, pull green into my, so I'll just, um, but everywhere else is dry. So I'm going to go through. All right. So if you'll see right here, um, there's like, if we could just start in the middle, there's some down here at the bottom and then there's some at the top that we'll need to add in stems to. Uh, so let me just add some of these. Um, sorry about the piano there. I got a little one playing. So with, a a tulip, you just make kind of like a U. I do this way and then a middle. Uh, looks like I'm going to need a second coat with these. So you just want to put them, um, if you think about like how a, a tulip falls, you know, their stems are like not super strong. So they kind of like start flopping a little bit, right? So they go out to the side and they kind of flop down. <clears throat> um, there we go. Um, and let's 
stay. So it's like stroke, stroke, and then one in the middle is pretty much how it goes. All right. <clears throat> and then up here, you know, I think I'll do like a more closed one. Since those ones are a little more stable. Um, close one up here. Didn't know you were going to be serenaded with piano. I wonder if you can even hear that. All right, let's see. So, yep, let's keep going out. Uh, coral ones up here. Chariots of fire up there. I wonder if you can hear that. Okay. Okay, so just keep adding tulips. I finally pulled in a little bit of magenta uh, um, because I wanted to add a little bit more. It was just a little bit too pinky for me. So I added a bunch of magenta and just keep adding them to everywhere uh, you go. And then eventually you can, if you want to go over the top of them and just make a, a swoop down into it on top, it looks like an extra little petal if you want to do that. So just keep adding tulips until you uh, have enough. You can add it more than this. You don't have to have this many, but add as many as you like and then wash your brush and we'll come back with the greens and add the stems. Okay, let's add in. Okay, let's add in some stems. Use that old paint. And I think I want the stems to be a little bit darker, so I'm mixing some of that blue in. Um, all right, so you're just basically going to, you know, make a stem. That's a little bit, that's a little bit dark, I don't know. Yeah, okay. And wherever you think the stem would go, just if it's behind there, they don't have to be super they don't have to be super uh, bright or anything. And if you don't, okay, so you can make some of them go behind, you know, and some of them go in front, but basically try to make every single uh, tulip have a stem. And if you, like I did here, you just get your uh, wet napkin and just wipe it off. If you go a little bit into your tulip, uh, it'll just wipe right off um, since the paint is wet. All right, so go ahead and connect your stems to your tulips, and I'll give you a minute, and then we're done with our green. Okay, are you guys ready to start on the background? How cool that if this is such a picture of what God does in our lives, right? That he is able to take something that's void and just black and nothing and able to bring beauty, all right? That's what he does. He takes he brings beauty from ashes because of Jesus. We all have sinned and we've fallen short of his standard of perfection. And that's why he put on skin. He came down. He lived the perfect life that we couldn't live in order to make a way for us to be forgiven of not being perfect. And um, then we, he gives us a choice to make. If we acknowledge that, yeah, I'm not perfect and I need forgiveness. He extends a gift of uh, forgiveness to us. And um, that's it, that's a, a decision that you have before you. If you haven't already made that decision that uh, if we stood before God and he said, are you innocent? Are you guilty? We'd all have to say guilty. And yet he says he knew that. And so he offers a gift to you saying, here's a gift of forgiveness. He lived the perfect life we couldn't live. He died in our place, paying the punishment for us. And he rose himself from the dead, proving he is the only way to be made right before the Father. There's not many ways to God. There's one. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, so we can choose to receive his forgiveness, uh, forgiveness. And the way you do that is just by saying, God, I'm so sorry. Yes, I have sinned. I'm sorry. I would love, please forgive me. Um, it's just as simple as putting your faith in Jesus 
and he makes our lives. He come, puts his Holy Spirit inside of us and then he makes something beautiful from the inside out. All right, so that is, um, and then he gives us the joy of having a life that is unshaken. All right, nothing can shake us. In Romans 8, he says, uh, for who can separate us from the love of God, neither height nor depth, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nothing can separate us uh, from the love of God. We are completely secure in our relationship with him. So let's move on to the background. I kind of really like the stark contrast of the, the creams and the black and the brown and the pinks. But just to show you how to do a background, um, I think I'm going to go with gray because I really am liking that. Um, and again, I don't want it totally mixed. So I just got some black, some white, mixed it up here, and we're going to palette knife it. So first, we just want to get it on there and get it close to the edge. I'm going to use a flat, flat brush for the big spaces. And then when it gets a little bit closer, I'm going to use a, a smaller um, probably a size, what is this? A size six round brush. Um, but anything right around that, four, six, eight, something like that. All right, let's stick it on there. And again, we could just, you don't have to go in any sort of certain direction. You just kind of stick it on. You could do hat, like a crisscross patterns. Okay, and then here. All right, and then also I want to leave a little black spot um, around there. All right. You want to get the sides as well. And if you kind of go a little bit too low, um, that's okay, because you can replace the black if you want to. All right. So I'm going to need way more paint here. All right, let's see. And again, at the end, I still have some of that chalk in there, so I can just erase that later with a wet napkin. Getting it on there because we're going to paint palette over the top of it. Um, and you can do any color. I guess I should have said that at the beginning. You can do like blues like in the back there you could do like a turquoise and I just encourage you to do two colors like mix them together. Um, instead of just have one color, just so it provides a little bit of depth and um, a little more excitement, I suppose you could say. Okay, Woo, whoops, got that tulip. Okay. All right. All right, now I'm gonna get the other brush. can get a little bit closer around the scissor. And um if you don't like the brush marks, you can just kind of like move the paint around so it doesn't look, so you can't really see the brush marks so well. Let's grab a little more paint. And you can blot it on there instead of drag. It's 
cool because all this meticulous work it just takes a while and it's kind of like that's God's work in our life it just takes a while right we takes a while to dry it takes a while to do the little pieces and yet that's how God's work in is our in our life he things take time you know we grow in environments of grace and truth over time and um, but yet God produces really beautiful things in our lives when we're yielded to him so we actually can live we can experience we can know that we are unshaken um you know i just wrote a book uh it's coming out in february 7th uh, and it talks about all the things that are true about us that we're wanted uh that we're secure we're pursued all the things that that god does for us that we so easily can forget about so you can buy that anywhere books are sold and hop on Amazon. There's also a Bible study that goes along with it. So if you want to do by yourself as your time with the Lord, or if you want to get a group together and do an unshaken group, that's really uh, great because it helps you process through like, all right, what lies am I believing about myself, about others, about God? And you can kind of um, develop strong connections with other believers through that. Um, because did you know the biggest need in our society today is, um, or the biggest, yeah, the biggest need is feeling lonely. So many people are lonely. And so uh, if you you start an unshaken group, just get a couple people, a couple women together with you. And um, it just, there's a bunch of resources at missionalwomen.com that will help you to know how, and I'll meet with you regularly on how to lead that group, but it will help meet that deepest need of not feeling lonely and being able to connect with other women uh, on a level that's um, really what your soul most needs. Because the deepest needs of mankind are to love and to be loved and feel worthwhile to self and others. And you just can't know that if you're not known, right? So an unshaken group, you can go through the book together, but there's also some resources that are going to help you really um, get to know each other well. All right. So how is it coming? Looks a little funny around the edges, but we'll clear that up, not to worry. I guess I'm glad. I think I like the gray. Even though the black was kind of cool. I wonder if browns might be neat. Sorts of different. Oh, all right. So let me go in here. Try not to let my paint drip. I have quite a bit right there. And remember, if there's something that happens that you don't like, you can just get a wet napkin and change it, or wait till it dries and paint over it. Um, but oops. Ooh, got that little guy. That's all right. You know, the, the Japanese have something in art um, called wabi-sabi, <laughs> and it's really kind of cool because they say if they're um, cleaning, uh, sweeping up some leaves or whatever in the backyard, sometimes after when they're done, they'll just shake the tree a little bit so some leaves fall down, just to remind them that there's always going to be a little bit of imperfection, that um, basically we can say nothing in this world is going to be all good except God. God is the only perfect one. And um, so when we try to expect perfection, we're just always going to, uh, it should drive us to the cross and remind us that, oh yeah, we're not perfect. God is the perfect one. So I thought that's a cool thing the Japanese did. I wish that they pointed to Jesus with that, right? But anyway, okay. So now let's, uh, oh, did I get the sides? Don't forget to get the sides. Nope, I didn't. I forgot these guys. So we'll start the palette, blah, 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 um, uh, with the palette knife as soon as you're done with your background here. <clears throat> All right, but I'm gonna need some more. Okay. Okay, and now you're gonna just, uh, 
same thing, kind of here, except it doesn't have to be in a certain side. So this was like straight across, like the grain of the wood, but this can be any way you want, right? It could just, it can go. It doesn't have to go the same grain. Um, you can block like that. You can go different directions. You can drag it. Um, so it's kind of like a background, impressionist type of. So I'm just, you know, blotting it, I guess, kind of like you would if you're cleaning up a, I don't know, you know what blotting is. <clears throat> just a couple little drags here and there, but really just. All right. Interesting. Okay, when you're done, now remember, there's a little bit too much black. I think I'm gonna drag some of this. Okay. Uh, so remember what I said at the beginning of when you look at it, and if you're like, oh, I don't like that, just stop don't get discouraged and stop right there look at it and say what don't i like what part of it uh, don't i like so you can stand back and say well actually you know what i think i like this part over here i like that but this is like there's something about it i don't like so try to figure out maybe it's just because it's too not smooth and so then you can just fix that little part um I think I'm gonna smooth it out. I don't think I like the blotting as as much as the smooth. So I'm gonna I'm gonna smooth it out some. You know I do want some blotting. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. There we go. And again, if you don't like it, just stand back and say, "What is it?" Oh man. All right. I'm gonna have to get that. Get a napkin. All right. Sweet. You know, I think God does that sometimes when he's working in our life. And he's like, oh, that's a, whoop, whoop, we still got to reshape that. We got to re, and then sometimes he's like, yeah, yeah, I like that. Pretty cool thinking about God rejoicing in you, right? Um, one of the things I talk about in my book is that in Zephaniah 317, he's, he rejoices over you. Like, like not just like, yay, cool, but like think of cheering at like the Super Bowl. All right. Um, a more he dances and sings over you. Crazy, right? That's what kind of God we serve. All right, so there's still maybe a little bit more um spots I need to fill in. That's just some black here I didn't get. So go ahead and look at your See what you think, what you want to change, or if you're good with it. All right. Yay! All right. Oh, here's a, I don't want that to drip. It might end up dripping. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me. You'll just want to like either use a hairdryer or let it dry. Um, make sure you wipe off your, when it's dry, you could just get a wet paper napkin and just wipe off your little chalk pieces and sign your name and way to go. Uh, I'm sure it's beautiful. All right. Bye-bye.